Hello everyone, welcome back to the Genomics Bootcamp. This time we will be exploring how to set boundaries on our analysis. As an example, we will use the FST analysis between the Angora and Gumus goat, what we did in one of the previous videos. What I have open here is exactly the script that we were using at that time. So you see that what we do here is an extension of that particular script. The one thing I changed is the name of the FST results file in R. So it was previously called the data, but now it's a much more descriptive name, FST results, which will be also used then in the follow-up script. So what is the problem we want to tackle? In the previous video, we have computed and visualized the FST results. So they look like this. And we basically ended up on a note that the highest signals need to be explored to see what kind of genes might reside in there. Now, the problem is to decide what are these highest regions exactly. So in other words, where to set the line, where to set a threshold above which we will check on the regions and below which we are not really interested in the SNPs. Now, there are different options to do this, and I present two here. But if you know about other approaches or you have your own favorites, then be sure to comment them in the comment section below. Before we do anything, I just want to note that the techniques and approaches I present in this video are not suitable for setting threshold on significance values or p-values. These have a completely different set of methodological approaches that need to be followed. Okay, but let's go back to our FST analysis. So we produced this plot with the Manhattan function from the R package QQMAN which shown here in the line uh, 68. Putting a threshold on a Manhattan plot can be done in various ways. In QQMAN, there is a neat option already implemented. So there is a genome-wide line, which basically puts in a threshold at a specified limit. The first thing we can do is specify such a limit in an arbitrary way, for example, uh, 0 0.6. Here I would note that this limit is well, really arbitrary. I just came up with it right now. And it is really hard to justify why is it 0 0.6 and why not, for example, 0 0.7, 8, or any other number. So unless you find a really, really good reason and a source and resource why a certain threshold should be used and this hard defined threshold should be used, then uh, this uh, is rather discouraged, but still, this first option is nice for us right now to show how the threshold system works. So after we rerun the script and implement our 0 0.6 threshold, so we see that, so there is a line here at 0 0.6. And in this particular example, we would take the SNPs and the regions they are in as a result. And we would analyze these ones in a more detailed manner. Another option is to analyze the top percentage or the top results from your runs as shown in this option too. This approach is more often used. So basically people are interested in the highest scoring regions, whatever the scores are for their particular analysis. Well, in fact, the definition of the limits by top percent of results is also a little bit arbitrary because there is no hard defined limit what thresholds should be used. Sometimes people use top 1%, top 0.1% or top 0.01%. So it is really variable, but still this kind of approach identifies the highest scoring results for that analysis. In this example, we are interested in the top 1% of the results, what we could extract with the quantile function. So we are interested in a top 1% of the results so meaning that we want to have the results that are above the 99% of other results or 99% of all the results. So we basically specify our vector here, vector of the result FSTs, and then we say that it should be, the threshold should be 0 0.99. We run it and well, we see that the, actually the threshold is at 0 0.534. So it's even a bit lower than our initial very arbitrary threshold of uh, 0 0.6. The difference between these two numbers, the difference between 0 0.6 and 0 
is uh, that while 0 0.6 was absolutely arbitrary, here you can justify why is this number exactly like this and what was the reason and what was the criterion to select it or how it was defined. So specifying this threshold option two with the genome wide line in the Manhattan function. So we put it uh, and we can visualize it. Also, we see from here that if we are interested in a, in a top scoring regions, then well, the 1% threshold is quite horrible because there is just so many regions that are popping up here. So if we are interested in a really most highly distinguished regions between these two breeds, then this doesn't help us too much. The solution here could be that we go higher and for example, we define or, or we cut the threshold at 0.1%. This could be done very easily. So what we want here is then the results that are above 99.9% .9 of all the other results. So the 0 0.999 here. So we rerun the threshold and rerun the visualization. So we see that our new threshold, which is uh, about, so the, for the 0.1% of the results is at 0. Uh, seven, four, and well, this is then uh, these relatively few uh, SNPs here. If we want to go even further, and for example, we just want to have 0.01% of the results, which are really the one, two regions that are absolutely the top scoring ones. Again, we can do it very easily because what we want to have is all the results that are about 99.99% .99 of all others. So we just add another nine here, rerun and rerun. And then we find really these three, four regions that are the absolutely most distinguished between the Angora and Gumus goats. Well, I hope this input was useful for you. If you liked it, then be sure to like the video. If you are not subscribed, which is by the way, most of you who are watching, then be sure also to subscribe and also then return and check out the other videos on the Genomics Bootcamp channel. For now, thank you for your time and have a very nice rest of the day.